Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for coming back. I am your homegirl, Daphne Brown. And in today's video, we will begin our series um, covering all things floods, flooding, tropical storms, and hurricanes because we do know that that is a big thing in our area. I didn't want to do it, but I had to do it to you. I got to give you this information that I have. Are you ready for it? Let's go. First thing that you want to do is to get prepared once you get prepared we're gonna help you stay prepared <laughs> so the first thing you want to do is to make sure that you have flood insurance okay that it's active you can even call your agent just to double check is my policy active, right? If you need to up the contents, coverage, and things like that, this is the time that you need to do that, all right? So make sure that that flood insurance policy is active. If you do not have a flood insurance, please do keep in mind that there is a 30-day waiting period. So you can't call on a Monday and think that your policy is gonna be live and in effect on Tuesday. It doesn't work like that there has to be a 30 day waiting period. And if there is a disturbance brewing in the Gulf, like we say here, then there may be an additional time that you will have to wait in order for your policy to begin. Next, you wanna make sure that you have your shutters ready, prepare those shutters. If you need to get plywood cut to the size of your windows and doors, we want you to go ahead and do that now because when there is a storm coming, when the newscasters and the meteorologists are telling us to hunker down, that is the wrong time to be running to Tractor Supply, Lowe's, Home Depot, all those places that are known for selling plywood. That is the wrong time to try to do this. So get your plywood cut to the size of your windows before there's a storm. And the good thing about it is it could be stored off to the side in your garage so that it doesn't impede your ability to park your vehicles. It also can be stored in the back if you have a shed. Also make sure that your garage doors are reinforced. Make sure you have those mechanisms in place. We know that the garage is the first feature to fail in the event of a high wind storm. So make sure that that is in place as well. And then make sure that your branches and trees, things like that, especially the ones covering your home, the ones that could um, become projectiles to be blown into your window, make sure those things are trimmed back as much as possible. And please, for the sake of God, make sure that any branches, any trees that are hanging over onto your neighbor's property Make sure that you have gotten those trimmed back as well, because if those branches or trees fall on your neighbor's roof, on their automobiles, um, if they become a projectile and damage their windows, that is going to fall onto your insurance. So make sure we are good there as well. <laughs> Put your valuable documents in waterproof containers. Listen, if you don't have waterproof containers, get a Ziploc bag and put that information in like birth certificates, social security cards, photos, anything that you consider valuable, please make sure that they're protected from waters. Turn off all of your appliances. Make sure that they're off before you leave your home if you're going to be evacuating. Turn off gas at the appliances as well. Turn off electricity to the main circuit breaker or fuse box. Make a final walkthrough of your home to inspect that the aforementioned items have been completed. And finally, 
make sure that your home is secure. Check the locks on the windows. Make sure all of your doors are secured as well. Before you leave your home, please make sure that any um, barbecue pits, grills, any swing sets, anything that has the ability of becoming um, projectiles, that those are secured. Now, moving on to protecting and preparing your vehicles. Make sure, make sure that you, during hurricane season, always have at least half a tank of gas, always during hurricane season. That's the rule of thumb and it's very smart. When we are told that there is a storm coming our way, go ahead and fill your tanks up. Because we know that when we get these messages that, hey, there's a storm coming our way, price gouging starts immediately at the pump. It's unfair, but it is an actual reality that we face. So, and then we also know that the lines for fuel are miles and miles long. Also, if you have children and you're going to be traveling with children, make sure that you have um, extra batteries for the tablets, for your phones. Make sure that they're always kept charged up. Make sure that you have coloring books and reading material for the kids. Also make sure that you have a working flashlight and fresh batteries. Check your vehicle's fluid levels. Make sure that you have adequate coolant in the radiator. Make sure that you check your tire pressure as well. We want you to be able to travel to safe grounds safely. Make sure you have a lug wrench and a jack in your vehicle. Make sure you know where they are. Make sure you know how to use them. You can YouTube that, but you want to YouTube that if you don't know how to do it ahead of time and not be trying to do this when we're trying to evacuate. Check to make sure that you have water and non-perishable food items just in case you become stranded. You want to make sure if you're going to have passengers that you have enough of those supplies for you and your passengers. If you become stranded, stay with your vehicle. Use a white cloth, it could be a t-shirt or anything to tie around your antenna or your door handle. Make sure that your flashers are on, make sure that your hood is up. These are signs to emergency personnel that you are stranded and in need of attention. We hope to see you back here next week for our second part of our flood series. See you later guys.